The presenting sponsor of Upmarket is Aereo, the best place to help manage and grow your real estate media business. Online at Aereo.com. That's A-R-Y-E-O dot com. Welcome to Upmarket, a podcast about the business of real estate photography and media. My name is Reed Fish. I'm the CEO and a co-founder of Upmarket Media, a real estate media company based in Southern California. I'm joined right now by another co-founder and our COO, Mark Corcoran. And so in our last episode, we did kind of a deep, well, I don't know about a deep dive, but we did a kind of recap of the origins of Upmarket Media, how Mark and I merged our two kind of solo shooter businesses into one. We kind of got into why we did that and what were the uh, first things that we did as we merged our companies. And I know in that episode, if you listen to it, I was like, oh, our next episode, we're going to take a deep dive into all these little things. And I think we've kind of reconsidered a hair on what we're going to do in this episode. I think what we're going to do is we're going to do more of a recap on our first year, how it went, what were some of the issues we faced, what was, uh, what were some of the successes, what wasn't so successful. Really, so then with these two episodes, we'll really have a base on what our business is, where we came from, and what we're doing. And then in subsequent episodes, we'll be able to get more into that nitty gritty of, of the logistics on how we do everything and hopefully, you know, learn some stuff and and hopefully be instructive for other people. And then I think starting with our next episode, we'll also bring on some other real estate uh, media entrepreneurs and have them on um, and kind of hear about their businesses and what they're doing and hopefully get some insights from them. And so Mark, um, how did the first year go? Man, what a year, huh? (laughs) Yeah, how are you feeling? (laughs) I, th- I guess we could say it was a roller coaster. Yeah. We wanted it to be a straight line to success to the top of the mountain. And, um, oh, you know, right. we're not to the top of the mountain yet. Yeah, I think we're still climbing. It's uh, a yeah, journey. I think so. Well, it's all a continuum, right? I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. I think that's like, for me, I feel like that's going to be the theme of this podcast is like, well, you're never done. No, it's like, it's always, we're always learning. We're always figuring it out. And there's always a new, a new problem, which, yeah. you know, we found out this morning. I mean, we're, you know, we're Tell recording it. Yeah. And so it's like, it just never, ever stops. And so, um, how were sales? I mean, I, that's, that's the reason that's kind of one of the barometers, right. Of, of like, is this a successful enterprise or not? Um, I feel like they were okay. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we achieved our goals, right? Right. We achieved our end goal and our sales were maybe you know, the actual number of shoots, I think, was a little bit less, maybe. Yeah, our- I think we did uh, probably 200 fewer shoots than I thought we would end up doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's mostly due to market conditions. I I feel like we expanded our client base. So obviously, individually, we both expanded our client base because we merged together. But I think we got a ton of new clients last year. It's just there's no listings. I I think we were really strong in the spring, right? From like February or even January before we merged. The the whole spring through May was really strong, which typically is the strongest time of the year anyway. Sure. But then I felt like in June, it just fell off. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking at our numbers every week, right? And we're just kind of like, huh going on here and that's just like yeah and then it just never we could never pop and have like a huge week again Mm -hmm. but i I feel like until the last two weeks and we're recording this you know what mid uh, mid to late march and it was a little tough i honestly it's it's been tough i we we've been fine but Mm -hmm. um the it's just we're looking at record low inventory and if there's record low inventory our bread and butter is doing listings and so right and just, the people that were ordering you know the full packages and all the services right. they were like hey just give me the photos it's already an escrow i just want to shoot it just in case it falls out just right. give me the bare minimum get me up online well right and that's that, that's a big thing right it is it is what i've actually been talking to clients about recently is is just trying to frame it because we're actually you know so much about what we're doing is like actually trying to do sales and so when mm-hmm. i'm talking to people now i'll just be honest i'll say hey look there has never been less need for our photos than there is right now. You could take one iPhone photo, put it on the MLS. It's going to sell tomorrow mm-hmm. for over asking with multiple offers. Right. And agents are doing that, right? Oh, some for are. sure. For sure. And even some of our clients are just getting the basic photo shoot and because mm-hmm. it's going to sell. It's our job to remind them that that is not optimal. And that, and, and I think it's actually kind of, you know, this last year has for me reframed exactly what we do mm-hmm. and what our services are for people because we don't actually market real estate. We market realtors. Absolutely. I mean, right. It, it, right? It, We're it, brand builders for realtors. Right? It, exactly. It's so simple. So 
the pitch to realtors then becomes, well, it's not about selling this any particular listing. And that's what I would, I was used to say, it's like, Oh, well, the photos really sell the house and then everything else is really markets you. And actually I've come to really believe that even the photos are just the marketing for the realtor. And mm -hmm. in, in this market, it's like, it doesn't matter. It'll sell no matter what. So what do you do? So our job is to remind the realtors that what they're doing is building their brand and building their credibility in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rather than getting in and out of this current listing for as minimal investment as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Little time, little photos, whatever. It's like, how can I use my listing that I have right now as a right. platform to get the next one, the next 10, the next 20? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, and I feel like that has been a big challenge. I feel like mm -hmm. that was a lot of, a lot of that we struggled with is having those people who consistently would do the extra stuff and just kind of scale it back. Mm -hmm. And that's, then that's ongoing. And I think we can inform people about this and make sure that they understand what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Oh, you're good. And that's, that's part of our brand, right? How we present ourselves to agents, how we present ourselves to the world, how people are finding us. Right. They're just searching through Google real estate photography, Southern California. We pop up. Right. It's like, you know, we want to be coming as a brand builder. Right. 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 And I think, and that, that's part of this journey of this last year is really mm -hmm. actually hammering down and figuring out what it is that we do. And I mean, that does sound so elementary, but when it's reframed for us, then everything that we do can play in, it plays into that. When we're marketing, when we're sending our, newsletters out when we're sending, mm -hmm. when, when Chelsea's on the phone with the client, when I'm on, cause I'm now doing a little more interfacing with clients on the phone. Um, now that I'm not shooting and, and cause we all kind of looked at, uh, uh who's on our team and, and part of, I think what I can do is actually be a real for a force for sales. I mean, I have Absolutely. that knack, I think. Um, so that's what I'm talking about so much now is brand building, brand building, brand mm -hmm. building. And I'm not talking about, Oh yeah, you got to get Oh, it's a view property. You got to get twilights. I mean, right. yeah, there's a little bit of that too, but you know, no, what you need to do is you get twilights and you leverage, you leveraged this amazing listing you have by getting the full marketing package so that you can get all that stuff out there and get your elevated brand in front Absolutely. of people. Yeah. So having that in the forefront of our minds, right. When we're talking, when we're, it just changes the language that we're using everywhere in social media, right. like you said, on the phone, online, like wherever. No, absolutely. It, it's, it's integral towards in how, and how we're going to move forward and how we're going to grow this business. Because I do think that, that as things potentially, you know, there's always this kind of creep of automation, right? There's, I think always mm -hmm. people freak out. It's like, Oh, you know, and in fact, we just met someone who they're doing the, the company, they just do Matterport scans and then they pull the photos off the Matterport scans. That's right. And I got to say, they looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, they weren't, amazing. Well, but, we were but, both doubtful right until we actually looked at him. We're like, yeah, well, no, the, the guy had said he was a guy wanting to looking for a job. And, and so he ended up sending some of his portfolio and I was looking at it. I was like, oh yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're not bad. Mm -hmm. And then we met with him and he said, oh yeah, they're all done with the Matterport. And I was like, oh, whoa. Yeah. You know, cause I remember Matterport pitched that when they came out with the pro two camera that, exactly. oh, this is just the one you just go through once and then you can pull all the photos. And you know, we've done that in a pinch, like when we have forgotten that bathroom, you <laughs> know, we've, we've done it and, and, and I think it's been all right, but it, it just, it, it, to me is not at the same level, but anyway, more to the point is that technology theoretically is coming. I mean, everyone thinks it's two years away always, mm -hmm. but, um, as we, so we just need to make sure that we remind people, what is the value that we bring? Yeah, whether we're doing photos, video, Matterport, or the next thing down the down the road, right? It's right, like right, right. We're positioning ourselves as a brand builder for them, and we'll be there to provide whatever service enables that. Right, right. So sales were tough, and again, we we made it out okay. I guess we left off last time where we had kind of talked about what were those first steps that we took when we merged, and so then we, you know we got these systems in place, and then we ended up. Pretty quickly after we merged, we ended up hiring another photographer. So then we were sitting with the two of us were shooters. And then we had Chelsea doing all the admin yep. and we had Dustin, our original employee. And then we had another employee. And then eventually now a year later, we've grown to, I think, six employees, uh -huh. one of yeah. them a virtual employee, um, but we still pay him real money. <laughs> um, yeah. So then we had, uh, so we, we were able to expand the team pretty quickly and right before we got into spring, which I think was pretty helpful, right? Yeah. I mean, that really worked out. And I think, you know, looking back now, like 
hiring employees, training employees, working with employees was all very new to me. You'd had mm -hmm. some minimal experience with it. Right. But for me, it was like, you know, suddenly you're a, you're a boss, you're oh, an yeah. employer, like, how does this whole thing work? And trying well, to figure that out on the go was, you know. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a different mindset. I Because I feel like for me, it's like I always, I don't know, like I want to put our employees first in a way because I feel such responsibility of like, I, I like, time. you know, yeah. they're, they're relying on you and, uh, and, and on our business and, and we want to follow through on the the promises that we make and, mm -hmm. and that can be difficult sometimes. And then, but it's a two way street. I mean, they have to, you know, we have a certain set of expectations and they have to meet those and that's hasn't always happened. Right. You know, and the thing with us is like, we, we can only send them into the field when we have shoots and jobs and work for them, which we don't have, total control over, right. right? We're very seasonal. Right. Days cancel the night before, like things happen that are challenging. Right. Yeah. And, and it's, and I feel like when, you, you know, for instance, when you do get those cancels the night before, well, it's like, well, for us, it's like, oh, okay. And then we'll just get another shoot. But then your employee is like, well, yeah, I blocked off the work and yeah. I don't have another job. And I need they, those hours. Yeah. Right. I was counting on yeah. that. Well, and mm -hmm. you know, we, yeah, well, we were counting on that money to pay you for those hours. So if we don't, if we don't have that shoot, I mean, it's, it's a tough thing to navigate. And so, and I think the, the, what you end up wanting is just obviously to have enough volume where even if you get those cancellations, you're still not going to be, you see, you'll still have the revenue to, to pay yeah, everyone. Or you and, can just pivot and readjust your schedule and everyone keeps working and flowing yeah. Along. Yeah. But I, I do think the, the, one of the challenges, because like we talked about last time, we chose to have actual employees and not just contractors. And so you do feel this like a responsibility to give a certain number of hours and, mm -hmm. and we are not guaranteeing a number of hours, but I think we're, we do all we can to make sure that you know, our, our employees can pay their rent. I mean, that's absolutely yeah. you know, all the time we get the shoots that push, but half the time to some falls right in. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of, maybe sometimes on those big ones, it'll be like, oh, that was going to be a $1,200 shoot and it just, oh, canceled. Okay. Mm -hmm. Poof gone. Yeah. Poof gone. And then, you know, you get a, a, a $250 shoot and that doesn't quite take its place, but you know, it, yeah. it, there's a little salve on the burn, I guess. Uh, for me, it's like when our schedule like feels completely packed for the coming week, it's just almost like, oh man, what if the phone rings again? But then there's, it just always seems to like something falls out, something falls in and you right. just kind of, you know, you make it work. Right. Right. So do you like having employees? I really like having employees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that feeling of being part of a team, something that we're building something bigger than ourselves. We're trying to empower our employees to be part of our company, not just clocking in, clocking out. Right. Right. So, and that to me feels really good. Yeah. For me, I guess I, it's a little bit of a struggle of like, I just want to be the cool guy. I want to be mm -hmm. the cool boss and like, oh yeah, man, I'm chill, whatever. Right. Like, let's, you know, let's just get the work done, but let's have a good time. And, 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 but I've always been careful to not be like, Hey man, I know I'm your boss, but we're friends. Mm -hmm. you know, no, it's like, that's, it's like we're both dads, right? It's yeah. very similar. You want to be the cool dad. You want to be the cool right. parent, but there has to be this kind of right. disconnect or a different kind of relationship. Yeah. There. Cause then I always think back to, you know, one of my first jobs out of, out of college, I, I had a boss who was, who was very cool and a good guy but he would always say, oh yeah, man, we're friends first. It's like, eh, mm -hmm. yeah, we weren't, mm -hmm. you, you know, when push comes to shove, you're just not. And right. Are you really going to hang out with these people outside of work? Yeah, would you well, find you, them? Would you, you meet them? Would you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and it muddies that water because then when there is those moments when it's like, okay, all right, we actually have to be a little bit, um, you know, kind of reset our expectations. Right. <laughs> we, we, Better we, put we, the boss hat on. Yeah, and, yeah. Right. And, and you, I like, if that just comes from your friend, I don't know. It's like, you, you just really have to walk that line. And, and I don't, I don't quite know the secret to it, mm -hmm. but I feel like when we have had to have those moments of like, okay, where it's, I guess more, you feel like, well, you're going to have a talking to right now. It's, right. it's lecture time. Yeah. You know, it's right up time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, right, it's right up time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, and, 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 and that can go, yeah. I don't know. No one is immune from mistakes. You know, no. you, you make mistakes. I make mistakes. Um, on the daily, it happens, it happens. And so, and I do think that's to our credit, we definitely empower our employees to make mistakes. We're, we're always like, Hey, look, you're not going to get fired for making a mistake. Right. Like let's, let's figure out why it happened. 
what we can do to make sure it doesn't happen again, but mm-hmm. it happens. Yeah, and and a lot of times that there are mistakes that we've all made, like that you and I have mo- made those same mistakes like countless times, right? Sure. It's just part of the journey and part of walking through the property and not missing this bedroom yeah. or no, not how many that. How many bathrooms can you forget? Yeah. <laughs> And the answer is two. We we actually had a shoot this year that uh, both both Dustin and I were at the shoot, and we both missed I think two of the bathrooms. Oh, yeah. So well, I missed an entire kitchen. So I think I got you on that one. <laughs> you missed a kitchen. I did. Yeah. Really? How did yeah. that happen? Oh, uh, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, see, oh, we can call out our employees' mistakes, but mm-hmm. Mark's. Oh, that was a kitchen. weird kind of hidden entrance, and it was just you know go wow. go go, and like dang, where are those kitchen photos? <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I've never had that, but okay. Well, mm-hmm. actually I feel like I'm better than you at one thing. Well, there you go. Just shooting awesome. kitchens. Yeah. I mean, that's the, really the only thing. So I, I just want to say, I think we got super lucky, right? We hired Chelsea as our first employee. And I mean, she set the bar so high mm-hmm. and I don't feel like we can take any credit for her. Like as far as our like strategy of who we were going to find <laughs> and what she was going to do and how it was going to work. No. Like she has just been like that a player just like, you know, right. hitting all the targets. And well, no, and, 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 I, and I think and with so much room to grow and obviously she's producing this podcast now. And so they're at like, and that's the great thing is we're able, hopefully with all our employees able to give a, a path to do more, mm-hmm. to, to expand their skill sets. And I think that's, and you know, Dustin has really knocked it out of the park too. And he obviously, Chelsea was our first upmarket employee, but Dustin True. was with us before and, and he's just done such an amazing job. And I think, he would say that he has learned a lot and mm-hmm. he's really been able to build on like the video skills that he brought, but he's been able to really, you know, when you're churning 150 videos in a year, or however, 200, I don't know, however many we did, mm-hmm. you learn some stuff. Yeah. And he's elevated our video product just to an amazing point now, you know? Right. No, oh, totally. Totally. So we have been, you know, we've been very lucky. I mean, all of our employees have so many good qualities and, but that's not to say it has, it's always been easy. And, and we have had moments where those expectations are, have not been being met. And, mm-hmm. and I think it's still a challenge of like, how do we incentivize people to, how do we bring out the best in people? And I think that we haven't always been able to do that. And yeah. it's a tough nut to crack because every, every employee is different too. Every personality is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We figured that out. You know, you're meeting people where they're at what they need out of this job and what they're capable of and what kind of jobs you can send them on. So there's that kind of management side Mm -hmm. of it. Well, and the nice thing is we do have a variety of of things that we can do where you you can, you know, pretty much within two days of hiring someone, they can go out and do a Matterport scan. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. not really, I mean, there's some philosophies behind it, like of where you place the camera, but it's really set up for, for anyone to, to it's be able very to teachable. Do. Yeah. yeah. It's very teachable. And so that's, that's been whenever we've had a new employee come on. Okay. First thing is the, uh, the shadow us on shoots and, and watch what we do, but we're, we're going to give you the Matterport camera and yeah. kind of send you out on your own. Mm-hmm. So, and that was another challenge. Obviously we talked about last time, right? Is our shooting styles, just you and I were very different when we started, right. we came together. We're like, what is our upmarket shooting style going to be? And right. that has changed a couple of times, I think throughout the year. But we're at a point now where we've simplified it right to the point where it's very predictable it's very yeah you know yeah clients it, love it and yeah and we still I, I mean i think everyone brings their their own their own eye and we were just talking this morning to one of our other employees uh, one of our newer ones and he was commenting just having some doubts about the the shots he's taking and and you know, how many shots he's taking and mm-hmm. and oh if i frame it this exact way or and and at a certain point, there is some leeway where never, no one is ever going to see the, the the shots the exact same way as much as we mm-hmm. try to make it a system. And so, and that's okay. I mean, the, the most people probably won't be able to tell. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you're right. If all of, you know, all our employees shot the same exact house, you'd probably end up with a different set of photos from every person. Right. Well, that just actually happened, right? So <laughs> we <laughs> accident, we acted, there was an accidental reshoot of a mm-hmm. house. Double that, shoot. A yeah. Double shoot. So I would be curious actually to look at the, the two versions of those photos because two different people shot, ended up photographing the mm-hmm. house because of a miscommunication. So actually that would be very interesting to do a side by side. Maybe we should do that. Let's do it. So one of the things about having employees too, and we touched again on this a little bit last time is the expectations of our clients. Mm -hmm. And I I know it was just such a gradual build, you know, having Dustin for like almost two years before we merged the company of like getting people 
comfortable with him. Yeah. And I mean, he's a nice guy. He's, he, he presents well and he's, he's really good at what he does, but it, it, it's, he's not me mm-hmm. for better, or for worse. And, yeah. and you know, he's not Mark and none of our employees are Mark. I'm not Mark and Mark isn't me. So did we get a lot of pushback from, from clients? I mean, we definitely, it's a client by client thing, right? I mean, some clients right. are just like, I need the photos. Give me the photos. I don't, you know, right. whoever shoots them, shoots them. If you're right. showing up to an empty house on lockbox, it's vacant. Then yeah, it's really kind of a moot point, but there's right. definitely some pushback. And even, you know, this morning I'm dealing with pushback. Right. I'm going to be out of town. We're going to send so-and-so to the shoot. Oh, I need to see your portfolio from this person. Cause this is oh, a high end really listing. Get, oh, jeez. Oh yeah. So that's why I got a text. Reed, I know you retired from shooting. You made a big hay about it on the podcast, but can you come out of retirement Mm -hmm. for this shoot? Yeah. So it's an ongoing answer is yes. Ongoing. Right. I mean, that's why as we kind of expand into new territories and bring Mm -hmm. on new clients, we're coming as a team. Right. So (laughs) for new clients, it's, it's a no brainer, but for existing clients, it is a challenge that's ongoing. It is. And in how, you know, how, what have we, I guess, what have we done that, to, to mitigate that. I, I guess it's just, we've, I think made a point and especially with certain realtors of, of having our new employees kind of show up with us. Mm-hmm. It's either they're shadowing us or they're going to do the Matterport or the, now they're doing video or, 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 or whatever. And I think having that introduction and I, cause I think like, for instance, when it was just Dustin and I, he would come and he'd be doing the video. So he would be, the clients would be familiar with him. And I mm-hmm. think after four or five times, Oh, Dustin, he does great work with the video. Oh, you know, and Dustin has to shoot the house today, do the photos too. Oh, okay. And then once it happens and once the photos are good, then it, then it's usually not a problem. Mm-hmm. It's getting that breakthrough, right? It's just, it's change. It's an unknown. I get why people are you know, right. pushing back against it. Yeah. And I think there's a little bit of when it's not you or I shooting the house that, there's always probably a little bit of the realtor trying to find something that's wrong with the photos, yes. even if they don't mean to, they're always, it's always, well, they oh, look good. Yeah. But you guys like, shot oh, these, right? Yeah. yeah. I can tell it's something. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell no way. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing is I, I've been doing a little more of like kind of overseeing since I'm not shooting, overseeing the photos as they come in, even though that's a job we give our admins, but you, you know, you and I usually do a final look at mm-hmm. the photos and just be like, Oh, the verticals need straightening on this one and that kind of thing. And I often have to like look at the schedule to be like, who shot this? Mm. And to me, that's good. That's very good, right? Yeah. That means our systems are working, our right. editing team and our final post right. team is so, like, it's well, working. Yeah, it's working. Sometimes it's like, oh, this photo is bullshit. Why? Who took this? And then it's like, <laughs> oh, it was Mark. So it's <laughs> <laughs> got me again. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's the nice thing is it's, it's yeah. not always to, um, it, it, it's not always in a good way of like who shot it, but, but for the most part it is, it's like, if we can't tell who shot what, then, I mean, that's a, that's a win. Yeah, for sure. But I think, you know, one of the ways that we've worked with Chelsea, our admin, as far as like kind of mitigating the pushback we're getting from clients mm-hmm. is like just the way that she kind of frames it. If a client reaches out, say, Hey, I need, what do you have for next week? What does Mark have for next week? Mm-hmm. You know, we can just, we're framing it as like, well, Mark is booked until Thursday, but we have so-and-so if you need it right. Monday or Tuesday, then we can plug you right in. So right, right. it's just kind of changing the language and how we present it. Right, right, right. Ooh, I'm glad you said that because I actually, um, cause we have our action items that we're going to do at the end. Mm-hmm. So I now, I, I, cause I actually, even though it's only our second episode, I was like, oh man, I got to come up with an action item. And I was, it's been such a busy week. I haven't been mm-hmm. able to. I hope come you didn't up come up it. with the same one as me. I, I don't think we'll so. Well, all those, you can go first when when we reach the end of the podcast, yes. and that way, if if it's a repeat, then I'll be on the hot seat to have nice. to come up with one on the fly. So I think we're about at the time where we'll take a little break. We're going to do our social media sidebar where we're going to talk about some social media stuff, and then we'll come back and we'll have the last half of our conversation kind of talk more about how this year's gone, and then we'll end with a couple action items. Right Mark, on. are you on board for all that? Let's do it, man. All right. All right, so Mark, we're going to get to our social media sidebar in a moment. But first, let's talk a little bit about Aereo. Oh, Aereo, Aereo. Yeah, Aereo is the presenting sponsor of our podcast. And my God, where would we be without Aereo? 
we I mean, are in honestly, that system like how many hours a day oh right? yeah totally i mean chelsea li lives in there she got an apartment at aereo yeah i mean that is our back end <laughs> system right for everything right. we do it's great oh yeah i the, the thing for me that i actually genuinely appreciate about aereo i mean it's many things but the um I, we get feedback from our clients all the time. And I, I mean, I have one client in particular who's just like, I love mm -hmm. your system. I love Aereo. Yeah. Because we just sent out a survey, right? And that was the one thing a client said was like, Aereo, we love you because of Aereo. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. it, it, and, and I think for it, 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 it has erased so many pain points for this particular realtor because it was always about how do I get the photos to, to and the, maybe she's not as tech savvy as some other realtors. I know we all have those clients who just aren't that tech savvy, but it's just, she can add all her team members in, anyone else who needs to have access to the photos, she can put in there all the photos, all the content for every shoot that we've ever done for her in the last year is still in there ready mm -hmm. to be downloaded at any time. And, and I think it streamlines the whole thing. It's so, so nice for the clients. Sure. I mean, if you're a client and searching through your email for a Dropbox link from a couple months ago, trying to do a send photo, oh. I mean, it's just like, that's a nightmare. Oh yeah. And, and it, and it saves us time because we don't get those emails. Hey, can you, uh, can you resend me those photos? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I lost the link. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I still get that from like two years ago. Oh, can you resend me those photos? And I'm like, well, wait, can you sell that? What are you using these photos for? Right. You need to pay me more money. Uh -huh. um, what, is there something else that you love about Aereo that we can talk about here real quick? I mean, one thing that I found, like we do a fair amount of custom domains, right? Adding oh, it right, on, they right. do great property websites, but some clients, you know, they want to advertise that property website either on a sign writer mm -hmm. or in the newspaper or whatever they want to do. And they have an in-house system for adding a custom domain to a website that's just basically click, click, that's the domain I want, and you yeah. click a button, you're not going back and forth to GoDaddy or whatever and try oh, to yeah. like change uh -huh. a name server and then wait 10 minutes. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, it's, forget it's that. It's so easy. It's so easy. Okay, we love Aereo. There you go. And you can actually, if you don't have an Aereo account, what are you waiting for? Get over there, Aereo.com, A-R-Y-E-O.com. Use the code upmarket and any new user will get 15 free bonus listings with their account. Love it. Can't live without it. Okay, Mark. So our social media sidebar, this is where we're going to talk a little bit about social media and we're going to give out our contact information. Well, let's do that first. Let's just get the boilerplate stuff out of the way. Let's up market, it. Up market media on Instagram. That's really the place to see what we're doing. Upmarket.media, not .com. Upmarket.media is our website. And you can contact us by email. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Reed at upmarket.media. That's R-E-E-D. And then Mark is... Yeah, Mark. I'm Mark, M-A-R-K, at yeah. upmarket.media. Media. And we also... You can check out our website for this podcast. We're at upmarketpod.com. We would love to hear from you. We're in the process of lining up guests for the show. And so if, if there's anyone that you think would be really interesting for us to talk to, we'd love some more suggestions. Um, also... Please subscribe, rate, rate us. This, it, look, if you want to give us a bad rating, don't rate us. But if you want to <laughs> give us a good rating, rate us. Like five stars. That's a really nice rating. We love that. We'll take it. But it, it, subscribers definitely really help. Uh, it really helps us kind of keep this podcast going. And that's it. Yeah. Any feedback is really appreciated. And we'd love to connect with you however we can. And so, Mark, what do we talk a little bit about social media? And again, we're really focused more on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and one funny thing that happened this week is we have this one client who is maybe can be a little more difficult, but she's always on us to like feature her listings on mm -hmm. our, on our social media. Yeah. That's not really something we do or offer, right? She's just kind of <laughs> like, Hey, can you guys, I need to get this listing out to as many people as possible. Can you throw it up on your Instagram and your Facebook and your whatever? And, and she always has like the crappiest listings. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, she they're knows okay. It, right? They're yeah. okay. But she's a high value client because she actually does everything. So it's like, we do, we love actually the clients who have kind of the, the, the not as good of a house, but they're still doing a video. They're still doing Matterport. They're still doing aerials. So though, I mean, that's, that's the bread and butter. That's the dream. But it's also when it's a kind of a crummier house, it's we're not really featuring it in our social media. Well, I mean, yeah, we're, we're picking and choosing the nicer houses, right? We don't sh always shoot the mansions yeah. on the beach, but those are the ones that we're featuring on our Instagram. Yeah, and, and I do think actually it's a good strategy to have more modest homes on our Instagram because that that's what, I mean, that's everyone's kind of bread and butter. But the Instagram is a bit aspirational for people, but I, I do think it's probably smart to feature some not as hot listings. But it's just so funny that she, she thinks she's going to, like sell the house by having it on our Instagram. Yeah. Which I guess a lot of realtors follow. How many followers do we have? Uh, we're in the 6,000 range, oh, somewhere up there. Yeah, That's pretty good. You had mm -hmm. built most of those before we even merged or yeah. not most, a lot of them. Like mm -hmm. 
artists. You had a good following, yeah. That's yeah. you know, it's it goes up and down. It's like it tapers and then suddenly, right. and, you know, it's just a weird thing. Right. And she definitely she I was on the phone with her and she was like, Well, I really want to use you guys exclusively. Um, so I w- it would be nice to have have this listing featured on your Instagram. Oh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of. She said, "You know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours." <laughs> I'm like, okay, lady. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I mean, some clients just have particular needs, right? It's like we have to decide if we got to meet that need, or you know. Yeah, um, I don't know. We'll put it on our Facebook. No one looks at that. Yeah. So, all right, we'll do the last half of the show. We'll have our action items, and then we'll get out of here. So, all right, thank you. Okay, so really to recap, again, like we want to talk about this first year together. So we meet with our business advisor like twice a month, Mm -hmm. and he's always harping on us about finding new avenues for revenue. So right. you're not just dependent on the real estate diversifying, market. Diversifying, right? Yeah, diversifying. Oh, could you take pictures of cars? Could you take pictures of mm-hmm. and and I think we're both at a point where no, we can't do that. Right. Like Can it, you do high end photos for architects or designers and you know, there's no. No. <laughs> no. I it's we can, but right. we just don't have a uh, an interest in doing that. And I feel like the, to insulate ourselves from the real estate market, we actually go deeper into the real estate market where we actually just get more real estate clients uh-huh. because there's always going to be listings, right? So even if the market dips, if you expand your client base, then you're going to expand your revenue base, your your potential for listings yeah. where you keep that volume up at a certain level, you'll get through anything. Right. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Yeah, as long as your expenses are, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's it's just this tricky balance, but mm-hmm. I feel like for us, it's like just the mental strain of trying to break into a, a, a new market. It is is hard. And yeah. one of the things that we have done though, and we're in a kind of a different industry that we are have actively tried to market to and are continuing to do that, is because they're high value jobs. Is is doing Matterport for like construction and architects. Yeah, that's been nice. Yeah, and you know we did one. Uh, you know, in the fall for like a, a giant Macy's remodel and you're doing like a 50,000 square foot Matterport. And it's mm-hmm. like, you got to travel to do it, but man, you make really good money. And it really kind of saved our bacon in, in like November and December. That's right. Yeah. Um, it came at the perfect time of year. Right. And so the, there's a lot of value, I think, in trying to get those type of clients because when you do get that gig, when it's a, a department store remodel and you go in with the Matterport and it's like, the clients, you know, the, the, and, and the great thing about architects is they don't, they don't bust you on the cost very much because they're, mm-hmm. it's just a pass through to their clients. So they don't really care. And sometimes they'll even tack, tack a little extra on. So it just becomes this revenue source that, that is high value. And, and again, with Matterport, like we said, we can, we can send any of our staff to right. go do it. I mean, if we want to switch it up, right. And do it ourselves, right. get out of town for a night and do something different, we can choose to do it, or we can just plug in one of our employees and. Yeah. Know. So that's, so for me, that, that avenue makes the most sense because it is kind of more in the wheelhouse, but where is where if we have to go do a, you know, high end shots of, uh, you know, advertising shots for, of cars or whatever, mm-hmm. that's something you or I are going to have to do. And, exactly. and the whole idea is that we don't want to do, right. <laughs> we, we want things get, that are scalable, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's all about scale. It's all about scale because that, mm-hmm. that stuff isn't, it isn't scalable. So, um, and then the other thing our our advisor is on us all the time marketing 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 mm-hmm. marketing what's your marketing, marketing plan this time oh, yeah marketing marketing oh so how are you are you doing the marketing and you know oh you're really busy right now well, you still need to be marketing because the marketing you do now while you're busy is going to pay off when you're slow that's yeah so it, it's it, and that's one thing that i as and i don't know you can speak to your experience mark but for me when we were building our old business to fish digital like I didn't really think about marketing. Mm-hmm. It was more just like, yeah, sure. If there, if there was like a realtor mixer, I would go to it, but that's yeah. about it. If I, you and, could, right. I mean, right. if you could, for me, it was always like, if there was a mixer or a cocktail, whatever at mm-hmm. night, I could figure out how to get there. It right. wouldn't affect my day of shooting, but if there right. was some kind of daytime event, right. I'm like, I'm either going to go to a shoot and get paid or I'm going right. to go to this thing and maybe it'll pay off down the road. Oh, and a shoot right. came up and I'll just forget it. Right. So it was challenging to fit that stuff in right. when you're a solo shooter. That we're finding now that our time is being freed up more and we can schedule ourselves and put those things on the calendar oh, yeah. that we know are important to build our brand well, yeah, locally. And, and that's the thing is they're much more important for us to go to than do to do any shoot. Yeah. I mean, no question. And then so we've really been so really focused on our marketing and, and what we're doing. So we've been 
you know, sending out a newsletter. I mean, I know we kind of, uh, Liz, my wife had tried to do a newsletter for a while and was doing a great job, but it's just so hard, you know, and COVID hit and it's just so hard to, to kind of keep that momentum going and, and to have things to talk about in the newsletter. It's, That's it's challenging. Like, yeah. You want to keep it fresh and add actual value instead of just throwing up some boilerplate stuff just to get it out. Right. And we, you know, we struggle with that now too. It's always, cause there's only as much as like, I feel like this podcast, actually there's going to be infinite amount of stuff to talk about because we're really talking about business and not just specifically, uh, and, and you're talking about business stuff and how it relates to our industry rather mm -hmm. than just talking about our industry. I mean, how many different ways can you describe Matterport to your clients or, or video? I mean, it's just, right. you know, it, gotcha. it gets, you know, when you have these, what, four core products, we have photos, we have aerial photos, mm -hmm. we have video and we have Matterport 3d and sure there's virtual staging and you know, th there's more stuff that we're bringing to it now, mm -hmm. but you know, it's not, it's all, and it doesn't always make for riveting subject matter as well. Right. Yeah. I get you. I mean, it's, it is hard to find that. So, but now, you know, our admin, that's her kind of main responsibility is doing that. She was bogged down with getting photos out in the morning, but we're trying to right. work around things to free up her schedule. So she has the headspace and the actual minutes in the day to get that stuff kind of knocked out. Right. And so we've, so I feel like we've done, so our first year is as again, it was the prism of recapping our first year. I feel like we've done okay in marketing. I would give us like a C. Mm -hmm. I think. Well, there are a lot of things that we wanted to do that couldn't, right? Nothing right. in person was really happening. Right, and when right. it was, Code, we're like, yeah. oh, I don't really feel safe doing that yet. Right, right. No, not until the last, like, I mean, we had those, that glory, those glorious three weeks last summer where it was in between surges and then, mm -hmm. in, and now for the last month or so, it's been, things are opening back up. But yeah, the in-person stuff w was always hard. Um, Very so, so, yeah. you know, so we're trying to, which we still, it's, it's hard to schedule we're trying to do lunches with clients mm -hmm. and, you know, just to, to even just try to have lunch with a client is like, can be so hard when yeah. you're juggling all these schedules. Seems so simple, but man, it's tough to get. Yeah. We, and, and no, and we just like created a VIP hot list. That was because we had a marketing right. consultation and, and, mm -hmm. uh, the, and that's like having like your 10 big clients that you, you make sure you interact with them on social media every single week. And so that's on Chelsea's radar on her list, but I don't think that's actually happened. I think naturally we kind of do that mm -hmm. just like if you're in Instagram and your best client puts a post, yeah, guess what? You're going to like it. Yeah. You might, well, your dream yeah. client, right? It's yeah. not necessarily the right. best that we have right now. It's the best that we want right. to get checking right. in, letting right. them know who is this upmarket media that yeah, keeps they liking keep, all my stuff. They keep liking. They, oh, God, they just put such wonderful comments on all my photos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, hmm, yeah. I should use them for, <laughs> for video. <laughs> We're staying on their radar, right? That's the point of it. Right, 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 right. So yeah, I, I, I think for us moving forward, marketing is definitely it's got to be like the key focus and, and we just have to step it up. I mean, that's, that's the way we can grow. And so what else with this first year would we, so we talked about employees, we talked about marketing, we talked about sales, you know, we, well, and I know we've talked in, 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 we joke around in the ads and, and we've talked about it, but Aereo definitely has been a huge component. And I mean, there, and you know, we were using Aereo before this podcast was even, a you know, an idea. Yeah. They were um, the clear, like we came together, right. Using different systems. I was using uh, something similar to Aereo, but just, you, <laughs> you know, can say it. <laughs> I mean, everybody knows two or buzz. I think if they've been in our industry yeah. for more than a yeah. couple of years, everybody knows two or buzz. Yeah. And they started I, I, out as the kind of the platform. They were the first ones. Yeah. I, I used them to build some websites, but I didn't mm -hmm. use it. You used it to deliver content and stuff. I right? used it for everything. Yeah. And I used to just uh, throw the websites in for everything, but then there was an, you know, it was a pretty hefty upcharge to do that. And then I found a lot of my clients just really weren't using them. So then I tried to scale back and just do photos and, mm -hmm. you know, their, their system, it served its purpose for me. Right, 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 but right. By the time we came together, I was already of the mindset of like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to, to up my game. I need a new, fresh feel. Yeah. And, and we, and so we definitely looked at all the big players in, in that space and we ended up going with Aereo and, and it really has been great. And we don't use the full functionality of what they offer. Uh, we've, cause I think just like we talk about, this is all a continuum. It's all a process. And for us to like take to really, I mean, we had that opportunity when we merged, right. To just be, okay, we're gonna start fresh. We're going to do everything right. a different way. Clean slate. Like what makes sense? But we did clean slate some things, but then some things were like, well, this is what I do. It kind of works. Let's just integrate you with this. And mm -hmm. so, and our scheduling, and I think the scheduling has been one of the bigger things that we've had to, 
navigate because it, we, I think we both want to keep a, an eye on that and, and how it goes. And then I think it, for, for Chelsea, it was the biggest learning curve because she's was never out like doing, doing the work. Right. And so if you're not out, you don't like you and I have an intrinsic sense of how long things should take, mm-hmm. what it feels like after you've done these three shoots and right. it, you know, what, what is actually a manageable day and, and mm-hmm. time frames for things. Yeah. And especially with employees, right there's, there's like mandatory 10 minute breaks, 30 right. minute breaks. And right. we need to work all that into the schedule. Right. Um, right. Shoot goes long and then they're pushed and then it can derail. Yeah, the, there's an art to the scheduling. And, and so mm-hmm. I've been very um, scared to try any kind of automated scheduling system. Right. I, the smart I, schedulers. Yeah, yeah, I think for us, uh, I, I don't know. It's it, it's just hard for me to wrap my mind around it. I guess I'm, I'm open to it. But that's been a process. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, and even now we run into stuff. I mean, it's, it, it's we don't always know. And there's always particular things too about your area. Like in um, in my town in Ojai, there's these famous mountains, the Topo Topo Mountains, and mm-hmm. there's it's called the Pink Moment. They glow at uh, at right before sunset. But more important than that is like if you have a property that has Topo Topo views, you got to do that in the afternoon because oh, yeah. in the morning they're backlit, and mm-hmm. so they don't look very good. And so only and so that's just one thing. And then if you're doing something at the beach, it's got to be at X, Y, Z. And yeah, then, we have the channel islands, right? Right off our coast. And everybody right. wants, Oh, I got to get an Island shot. I got, it's got to be right. clear. And in the summer you got the Marine layer and yeah, in the right. winter you got right. this and that. It's just yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So you can, there's channel islands view probably 50% of days, mm-hmm. maybe if right. you're lucky. So you and think, so, all right, and, well this time you can't of year, know in advance, right? We'll do it in the morning. Cause we know. And then, yeah. you know, Oh, can we push to the afternoon and our afternoon's full and it's, you yeah. Know, so it, it, it's definitely, there's, there is a big art to it for sure. And I think mm-hmm. Chelsea's done a you know really good job of navigating it. And, but you know, we're still going to run into, into, yeah. into and our geographic area is fairly large. I mean, you know, right. 30, 40 minutes between shoots sometimes, sometimes longer and you're mm-hmm. getting close to LA with traffic and rush hour. And there's just certain things that smart schedulers were, I guess, a little weary of, but right. maybe something we'll revisit down the road when we get yeah. to a point where the Google calendar is just so maxed out with the rainbow colors that it's like unreadable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's getting to that point. So we, and to kind of get back to, you know, where we are now after a year, we, came in with, you know, one employee, well, really with two. And then now we have, yeah, we said we have six. And so it's, it's a lot to manage. I feel like it it was like when we had this last round of like hiring a few more employees, like things kind of shifted for me in my mind. It felt like, like before it was always just Dustin and I, and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, Liz would do stuff too. And then, and then you, you have this, Chelsea's come on and then you have more people, but then it's like, all of a sudden it's like, Oh shoot, this is like a real business. And like, right. oh, like what have we done? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, before we were like bootstrapping it and like, you know, you just kind of go about it and you kind of make it up as you go. And we're still mm-hmm. making it up as we go, but it, it, like you feel the weight of it. Not only do you see what the payroll is costing, which is obviously going to be a lot more, mm-hmm. but it's just like, yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. And so it feels real. And, and I think it actually, it's good because it, 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 for me, it gives a real focus and a real sense of responsibility in a good way Mm -hmm. of like, Oh, I want to build this so we can keep this going. And like, Oh, we have this, all this support staff now. So we can do things like, Oh, if we want to do this podcast, we actually have we're a media company. We have people on staff right. who can record it, who can mix it, who can produce it. And Imagine so, trying to do this at this time of year, like a year or two ago. Oh yeah. It was just, you know, oh, we're yeah. just solo shooters and you're squeezing. I mean, it's right. just like, man. no, cause we're doing this podcast and we got people out shooting right now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's yeah. great. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, a shift, right? A paradigm shift where you are taking on that responsibility, but right. It does. It doesn't feel like a burden before I was just, I felt like I was drowning in my business. It was just like all of this stuff trying to keep everything juggling and going. But now it feels like we're building something underneath us that can support us, can support our employees. And it's, it's just a framework for something that's so much bigger and more exciting. Right. Well, we have this first year. So what are our plans for the future? I mean, what, how are we, because the whole point of this, right? The whole point of coming together is, well, I don't know. Let me backtrack from that. I was going to, cause I was going to say the whole point is to scale and it is to scale. The whole point is to get bigger. And I guess that's in, inherently what scaling is. And I think we, in last time we kind of addressed, you know, why did we want to do that? And I think it was, you know, again, not always about the money, but as we move forward and now as we've built this base, 
how do we get more money? I mean, that is, <laughs> <laughs> that is the, that is the, that is the thing. Cause I think if we come at the end of this first year, like, and I think we're both in the same boat. Like I don't have more money than I had a year ago. I right. probably have less money. Uh -huh. Like I don't think we made as much individually as, as we had when we were just running our own shows. And part of that is I think if we had had those 200 more shoots that I thought we were going to have, uh -huh. we probably would have, but we didn't. And, and that's okay. But it feels like, I feel like it's a bit of a short term pain for long term gain. Yeah. And, and that we're just sucking it up right now because what we're building is going to pay off. Yeah. No, if I totally right. agree. I mean, it's, you're bringing on employees, you're bringing on more payroll, right? You're like mm -hmm. suddenly, Oh, they need a, this camera and that gimbal and this drone. And it's like, man, yeah, you can have more capacity and do more shoots, but your expenses go through the roof too initially to just get all of that set up. Right. To get all of that flowing. So yeah, there is some pain for sure. Yeah. So, but what is our, our plan? For this, for this upcoming year on how we're growing. I mean, like, I think, it, well, we do have a plan. I'm just like, <laughs> Wait, you have a plan? Not, we're not, we're, yeah. We're, we're, I'm just framing it that way that, mm -hmm. that like, we are trying to, because I, I think our, it seems like our market share was, like, we kind of figured out our market share in, like, mm -hmm. our region. And we... And it's hard because it's hard to find the exact numbers, but we put it between around 15%. It was 15 to 20%. Right. Yeah. And you and I both like being not knowledgeable about that. We're like, oh my God, we have so much room to grow. Yeah. So oh, we thought, we oh, we got to get to 40%, yeah, 50%. Well, well, because I, and in my small town, I, I, I was like, oh, I shoot everything. And it's like, oh no, you don't. And, mm -hmm. and we told our business advisor those numbers and he's like, are you serious? That's amazing. Right. He's like, if you have 10% market share, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. You're so saturated. 50, you're maxed yeah. out. And like, so wow. we were like, Oh no. Cause part of our marketing plan was like to try to get more business in our kind of home area. Mm -hmm. Um, and I still think it is. Cause I said, like, even this week we've got like, uh, like four or five new clients. I don't even know how, um, well, because of our marketing and they're in our low, in our kind of, wheelhouse our, our uh, we don't call it a farm but i guess realtors call it a farm but mm -hmm. but so what we've really been actually focusing on is trying to break into the east side of our county so ventura county is very it's very big geographically mm -hmm. and, and it uh, has a pretty high population and there's and there's a big grade right in the middle of it and down the grade is is west ventura county and then up is east and so we're really focused west ventura county so we're trying to bust into east ventura county and maybe go up to santa barbara Santa Barbara is a little problematic because it, you got to get through Montecito and just logistically for us, we would really have to have staff up there. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a, a never ending freeway construction project, right? Yeah. It's just like, man, no, it can kill your day trying no, to get up there. It does. It just it, like, if you have to go up for there for one shoot and we, you know, we have some clients up there, so we go up there sometimes. And so it's, you know, uh, in, a good, in a good moment, you know, 30 to 40 minutes to get up there, but it can take an hour. I got stuck, I don't know, a couple months ago and it took an hour and a half. And, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and so just that, that, that's completely. just a, that's just a killer. And so we were really thinking like, eh, maybe we don't want to try to go into Santa Barbara because also if you go up to, to East Ventura County, then that butts up against LA. And so, oh, mm -hmm. it's a natural growth progression that way. And if you go to Santa Barbara, there's kind of not much north of that. So right. it's kind of an island on its own up there, right? Yeah. And so our plan right now is to really focus on that new area of East Ventura County. And in fact, our newest employee is based up there. And so that was, and because it, once you get up there, it, it's also a bit of a hike for any of us to get up there and shoot. So mm -hmm. to have someone up there, to have someone who you're not having to pay you know, a ton of mileage to go do the shoots really set the stage for us to be able to expand. Cause part of the issue was, okay, we can market up there, but what happens if we all of a sudden talk to a brokerage and they're like, you, we love you guys. And we want, mm -hmm. well, yeah, we're going to promote you. And all of a sudden you have 10 big clients up there. So yeah. how would we service that? That was a big challenge of growing. Do you get the business first or you get the capacity on our end to mm -hmm. fill it when it comes or if you hope it comes? Well, right? right. And so for us, what happened is we hired this new employee and she's great. And she's also we've been able to, because we don't have all that business up there. We have some mm -hmm. and she's able to do some shoots, but she's, her strong suit is actually post-production. So she, we've given her then some of the post-production, the final pass on the photos. So that's, it's really been able to help us out because th th that was not even in our thought process when mm -hmm. we hired her, but then it was like, Oh, you can do that. That'll be great. It frees Chelsea up to do this marketing. So 
we're looking to grow up there. We don't have the shoots, but we're able to give this employee a bit more work. Yeah. And I mean, it really worked out, right? It kind of fell in our lap a bit. And now looking back like, oh, that was pretty genius of us to do yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely. <laughs> well, and that's because we had advertised for for a new position, uh, for hiring. You know, we mm-hmm. wanted a new, another videographer. We wanted another photographer. And we kind of focused the job postings up there, but everyone we got was kind of down by, right. down by us. Like all the applicants were by us almost. Mm-hmm. So it was yeah. really, so we ended up hiring someone local to us, right. That could travel mm-hmm. there. And then right, right, right. at the end, after we'd kind of done that, right. She kind of fell in yeah, our lap. Like, we oh, planned, are you still looking for someone? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. We planned on hiring probably one person and we ended up hiring two. And, mm-hmm. and obviously I'm really glad we did because all of a sudden now things got super busy. Yeah. I mean, just this week uh, in her neighborhood, she's doing two twilight shoots. Right. Right. And for us, it's 45 minutes to an hour plus, and you're dealing with rush hour to try to get that far out to do a twilight shoot. And it's a new client and you want to service them and do it well. It's like, man, what a relief. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because that, and that's the, and and I think that gets back to, I think what we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up and then we'll do our action items is, is I I do kind of want to talk a little bit about how we feel after this first year. Right. So mm-hmm. we, we've, we've talked about all those, all a lot of the logistics and yeah, I don't think we made quite as much money. I mean, we did fine. I mean, we're not, mm-hmm. we're not destitute or anything like that, but man, I feel better. Yeah. I mean, I'm sleeping better. Oh really? Oh, way better. Yeah. Oh, were you like, like up at night or just like, I'm, rest? A, I'm a pretty good sleeper for the uh-huh. most part, but just, man, just that first, when you hit your pillow at night, Mm-hmm. When you have 20 things in your head, oh, did I text right. that person back? Did I schedule that? Right. Oh, I need to check that. Like a lot of that, probably all of that really is gone now because Chelsea's handling it. Right. You have people that are checking on what I'm doing. It's not just me yeah. floating all these things. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think if you, I, yeah, for me, if you contrast like how I was on that day when we first talked about merging to how I am now, I mean, it's it's night and day. I mean, I feel mm-hmm. so much better. Yeah. and 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 I feel like, that one of the scary things about scaling is, oh, if we're successful, we're going to have this big company and we're going to have to run it and that's going to be super stressful. And mm-hmm. yeah, I guess it can be, but I think it, it, it feels more for me. And, it, and this is just, I guess, for where I was in my life and my, and maybe my personality, it just feels much more doable and it feels much more interesting. It doesn't feel like such the grind because you are dealing with, you know, new stuff, all the time, Mm -hmm. but I actually don't feel the weight of it in the same way that I felt when, when it was just me and Dustin. I mean, it's a weight, but it's different, right? It's not a burden. It's like, it's an opportunity and it's like, yeah, it's, it's it's just a different feeling. Right. So yeah, I don't feel like I'm, I'm drowning. I feel like I'm sitting on top of, you know, so much potential. Yeah. Whereas before I was, I was hitting the ceiling and I, we talked about, oh my God, if a new client called, it was right. a stressor. Now it's, now it's an opportunity that we can service that client and we can, you know, continue to bring more people on. Yeah. So I, I think it, quality of life. I mean, I think mm-hmm. our, both of our quality of life and we talked about last time that we were able to go on vacation and, and, you know, we're going to do that again this year. And so I, I feel like that it's just the quality of life is so much better. And so that's what I, for our listeners, anyone thinking about scaling, that's one of the things that, that I want to impress upon everyone is like, it it can't, I don't know if it it works the same for everybody, but I think for both Mark and I, it has been a path to a better life. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't mean more money, but it does mean a better life. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean more money yet. Yeah. I I think it will. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I truly believe that. So, if you want a better life, maybe you want a couple action items in order to start that process of scaling your business or, or, you know, what, what can help Mark, let's have you go first. Today. All right. That's Again. It. All right. I got a great action item. Okay. Something we've mentioned a few times Okay, is our business mentor, right? Our advisor. Oh, yeah. I highly recommend finding someone and there's great people in our industry that do coaching. Mm-hmm. That's very specific to our industry, but it doesn't need to be, even be that specific. Mm-hmm. You just need a business mentor, someone. There's a lot right. of people that are retired consultants, can, retired business owners, mm-hmm. people that just do it for a living, consult and advise other businesses. And for us, that's been huge. Like when I I had someone years ago through the Chamber of Commerce, mm-hmm. it was an older gentleman and he'd retired and he would, you know, he'd give me all kinds of tidbits. And it's just having that 
a couple times a month just pulls you out of working mm -hmm. in your business and it just keeps you in that mindset of working on your business. What are the bigger picture things? What do I need to be looking out for? Mm -hmm. So for me, the business advisor, that's a huge step. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, what kind of play into that and I think what I think we found valuable about having this partnership is just when we have the opportunity just to hang out. Mm -hmm. And just to sit down and, or just talk, or, you know, if we, if, if we schedule a formal meeting, having just time to kind of talk and bounce ideas off of each other, it's so valuable. I feel like we get so much, so much out of that time. And so, yeah. and, and then if you bring in that third party who, who, who can kind of look at things from a different perspective, who's not mm -hmm. down in the muck with you. Yeah. No, I, th I think it's super value and that, it, valuable. And that's kind of what one of the thought processes behind doing this podcast is just an opportunity to talk about our business. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think for you and I, we're going to be able to, to just, just us talking back and forth, I think crystallizes, I think what we're doing and how we've done it. And it's in, and just this, this avenue of communication. Mm -hmm. So the more you can communicate with people, I think the more you're going to learn. And so, yeah, you're yeah. just verbalizing all that stuff that you think, Oh, the other person knows this. Right. Oh, everyone knows that, but it's like just getting it out there and saying, right. It, right? And, and I really think that we have a lot of valuable stuff that we can impart to the audience that, you know, that can learn from our experiences. But I also think, I truly think this is going to be a learning experience for us. Even if mm -hmm. we, you know, obviously we're going to bring on other guests and they're going to, it's going to, you know, be able to have stuff that we're going to learn from. But I think just between the two of us, I think we're just going to learn things about our business and about how we relate and how we can ha do things moving forward. Yeah. So, which I think my action item isn't, isn't as good as yours. Okay. What but you it was good us? though, but it, it's very simple. And again, like I'm kind of thinking of just these tiny little simple things that you can do. Uh, and, and last time mine was change the name of your business. If your name is in the, in the business, but one of the things, even if you're a single shooter and you have like a cool business name or you, whatever, and you, even if you don't have a staff yet, start using the Royal we. So instead of saying, Oh, I can be out there. Oh, we can be there at such and such time. Oh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. If you just use that, we, then that always sets the stage. Or even if you just have an admin and you don't even have another shooter yeah, or a photo editor or your yeah. wife's helping you with invoicing or your husband, yeah, so whatever. Right? Yeah, exactly. So like just using that Royal, we, and it helps put you in the mindset of like, Oh no, it's not just me. Even mm -hmm. if you're, you know, it can be a little fake until you make it kind of thing. But I think not only does fake it till you make it rhyme, it also is true. It works. Right? It, yeah, it really like does it. work. Simple, but it's great. Simple, but great. Just like my intellect. <laughs> I just want to add, add one thing oh, too to please, my action yeah. item. Okay, like yes. The business advisor might sound scary or expensive or whatever, but there's so many free resources. Check out your chamber of commerce. Check out your local networking groups. There's probably something you can right. plug into. Like for us, it's a very minimal investment. Right. And we get access to this great guy you yeah. know, twice a month and he's yeah. been amazing. Yeah. No, it's so key. Thanks for listening, everybody. So the next episode, I think, I don't think Mark will be on. I, maybe he will. I don't know. But we'll, If you're lucky, I might be here. <laughs> uh, but we'll have a cool guest, and we'll, you know, we're not going to announce that yet. But uh, thanks for listening. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ree. That was a good one. All right. Upmarket is a production of Upmarket Media. This episode was produced by Chelsea Froelich and recorded, edited, and mixed by Marco Guerrero. We're so happy you listened today and really hope you'll listen to the next one too. In the meantime, our wish for you is to not have to do any Friday night twilight shoots. Thank you for everything. Thank you.